Okay, hello. I think I'm going to start the webinar. Um, it looks like most of us are here. So basically, I just want to talk to you about the latest updates in our data and functionality in the last release. Okay, so just a bit of logistical information. I've muted all the microphones. Um, I'll take some of the questions at the end, but my colleagues are here. Matthew from um, Ensemble Comparative Genomics, Fergal from the Gene Build, and Sarah from Variation. Um, and they're going to be keeping their eye on the chat box. So if you have any questions, um, even during the talk, go ahead, address your question to everyone. Um, and they may answer, um, either at the end or they may answer while I'm talking. Um, also, there's a PDF of the slides, which you can download for your reference. Um, it's there in the materials, so hopefully you can access that. And just to let you know where the chat box is, if you haven't found it already, um, it's there at the bottom of the panel, and you can actually take it out in a floaty window, which makes it larger. Okay. So the updates kind of cover um, a lot of different types of data and functionality we have. The release was the 12th of March, um, so it's going to be um, pretty stable for a couple of months. The next release is in May and will be E80. So I'm just going to go over uh, everything from genes to um, comparative genomics to variation, but I'm just going to touch on the new aspects. So the first thing I wanted to mention is the gen code set. So for those of you who are not sure what it is, we have it for human and mouse, um, and it's the default ensemble gene set. So it's what you'll see if you're um, on the API or the FTP site and you access our genes. Um, it's called gen code 22, that's the latest set, and it's a combination of manual annotation, Havana manual annotation, and also ensemble automated annotation where we take um, the sequences in known public databases and align them to the genomes. So, you know, it's this comprehensive set. And in this release, we've got the updates um, and we also have um, annotation on the latest patches from the assembly, the Genome Assembly GRC H38. Um, and you can access these through the browser, Biomarts, APIs, FTP sites, um, sort of all all different ways. Our second update is um, a rather new thing. So we've got now RefSeq and Ensemble gene comparison. Well, I've put the gen code there to remind you that it's the gen code set we're um, comparing to. And we'll let you know if there is a whole transcript match with RefSeq or, um, you know, the Ensemble, a CDS match, which is the coding sequence match, and we'll even go down to more granularity, so untranslated regions, et cetera. You can, at the moment, access these with the Perl API. So um, it's the transcript attributes if you do use the Perl API. And if you want to know more, um, you can have a look at our release blog post, which the URL is on the slide there. And in the comments for um, the release blog post, Fergal has really explained what exactly you can find there in the comparison. So um, have a look at it, um, you know, to, if, you, if you're interested in this to find out more information. Okay, so then moving on to the gene gain loss tree. So what is that? Well, we've had it in the Ensemble browser um, for quite a few releases now. And if you go to any gene, so for example, the Hox A10 gene, on the left, in the left-hand menu, you can see the gene gain loss tree link. So this allows you to view um, a comparison with the species tree of the current state of affairs of genes in different species now. Um, and you might, it might help to look at this example. So we'll let you know if an ancestor has, seems to have had, um, you know, 14 genes. If it looks like there's been a dramatic increase in the genes, which in this case for chicken, it does look like that, um, or if there's been a dramatic loss in genes, um, and for the turkey it looks like that. So you might have noticed this is a green, which is a significant contraction, um, or red, which, which is a significant expansion, so lots of genes seem to have been gained. Um, so 
that's been around for a little while. So then what's new? Well, we've got a new um, code base that it's built on, and it gives you um, the ability to actually see this in a radial view, so the circular view, uh, which might help you with your analyses. And that's um, that little arrow icon there. You can also open full or condensed tree, and you might find the functionality is a bit faster, a bit different, um, if you have been using them. Okay, so moving on to another update, um, I'm actually going to move on by pointing out that from that gene gain loss tree, you can search for any gene or SNP, for example, single nucleotide polymorphism, in the upper right-hand corner. So I'm searching for one particular SNP. You don't even have to specify the species. Um, and in the results, I see already that it's a sheep variant. So I can click on that um, RSID, and I'll be taken to a page called Explore This Variation. Um, and then I'm just going to click on Population Genetics. And I'm taken to a page which will show us what the update is. So we have new genotypes in this release from the NextGen Consortium, and those are for three different sheep species. So I can see here that there's now genotypes for the Moroccan uh, sheep species. You can see um, the allele distribution in the pie chart up there. So there's 98% G, 2% A, so A is the minor allele. And now I can see the genotypes are AG, very rare, and then GG, very common, um, and there's no AA allele, at least detected in this study. So we have um, Another web update, which is the region in detail or location view, is now scrollable. So if I go from this variance tab or the previous gene tab, if you click on the location tab, you're automatically taken to the region in detail page. So we have had this overview panel as a scrollable panel for a few, you know, many releases now, where you can just grab with your mouse and, and scroll the genome. Um, but you've only been able to see a limited set of functionality there. So now we've got this scrollable panel. You can just click on the drag select icon, and then with your mouse you can scroll through the main part of the page. Um, and you can turn on any tracks you want, and then go ahead and scroll um, with your mouse. So we hope you find that useful. And we also have a new blast image back by popular demand in the results page when we updated um, our, our latest blast splat. Uh, we did lose an image. We kind of did that on purpose because we weren't sure it was um, used very much, but actually people have asked us for it back. So it's this hits on the query sequence image. Um, it's underneath the hits on the genome sequence. So if you run a blast job and you go to the results page, you'll see the hits all over the genome. And then if you keep scrolling down under it, you'll see the hits on the query sequence. So I actually quite like this image. Um, basically, it shows you where the sticky regions on your query sequence are. So in this case, my query sequence is this race track. Um, and it lets you know, do the hits actually tend to match to one part of the query sequence? And in this case, yes, it does. So the beginning of my query sequence, looks like it might hold a repeat or a very sticky region on the genome. And it will even show you the coverage up here. So this little bit of the sequence is where most of the hits are falling. Um, yeah, so you can now use that in your analysis. You'll see it any time you run a blast or a blast for any species. OK, so I've gone over updates in the genes, the gain loss tree, sheep genotypes that are new, and a couple of the browser enhancements. Um, now I just want to talk a little bit about the REST API and the updates there, um, and then list a few other things which I'm not going to really talk about in detail. So the REST API um, is quite um, a quick and easy way to access ensemble data, and you can do it with multiple different languages like Perl, Python, Ruby, Java, um, so you don't have to for example, no Perl in order to use it. Um, you can also, you might not know a programming language, and that's fine. You can use wget, curl, or you can just use the URL. So you can just type in a modified URL and get something like a gene tree. 
um, or sequence. So have a look if that sounds, if you're only remotely techie, you can still use it. Um, go to the rest.ensemble.org um, and there are user docs there, docs there, yeah, which we, you can um, have a look um, and shows you how to use it, shows you some examples. So um, I'll go back to the rest, but basically the Global Alliance, if you have not heard about it, is for genomics and health. It's, a, it's quite a huge project now, a huge consortium. Members are from 259 different organizations across 28 countries. And what they're trying to do is help progress in human health um, by coming back to the genomic and clinical data and trying to find a way to share this data, um, which we then can access with these types of bioinformatics projects. So we have three new REST endpoints which support the Global Alliance. Um, and these endpoints actually access the latest phase three data for the Thousand Genomes Project. Um, they're more of a computer readable um, type of thing. So the, the output format is more computer readable, um, but they give you the ability to filter genotype sets by sample, um, bulk data access via paging mechanism, um, and then a, a special machine readable format as well. So, yeah, have a look if you're interested in those. You'll see them if you go to the REST Ensemble. They're there in the variation section. Some other updates. We've got a new assembly and gene set for fruit fly coming from Flybase. Um, there's now the ability to upload your own data in BigWig uh, format, and you can display those on the whole chromosome um, or the genome. Use the Add Your Data button to do this. And you might see this example here. Uh, you, can, you can do this and, and show your data as little arrows along um, the karyotype. And finally, if you run a couple different BLAST or BLAT jobs using the same input form, so maybe you put in two or three sequences as the input, those hits can be shown on the genome all at once. So you can compare um, you know, hits from different queries. So just to remind you, we do have news for every release. So on the home page, uh, you might be able to see, we always have a what's new. And we kind of uh, choose the top three, which we think are the most interesting to people. But you can see all the different updates using full details, just by clicking on full details. Um, and you can just read through all the news there. Always feel free to um, let us know comments or questions on our help desk. Um, and then we have, um, you know, tutorials, pages, and videos if you want to learn more. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter. Twitter is especially active. Um, and our blog, where we go in more depth about the information. And we'll list a little bit more about our updates and explain a little bit more about them each release. So just acknowledging the Ensemble team there, um, and then we'll take any questions.